overtime. All right, welcome back to Overtime Arcade. I'm Charlie, and I know, I know, I should be working on the joust. Uh, believe me, that's what I wish I was doing. Uh, you know, we've been making really good progress on that project, and I think we're really coming up to the, the final stretch. Uh, you know, there's really just some, some cabinet work left to do, and uh, then I'll be able to put everything back together, and we'll have a finished joust, a finished joust project. Um, but, you know, I've been traveling for a couple of weeks and you know I've been busy at work and my kids have kept me busy too and I I just haven't had the time uh, to do that work and believe me that's what I wish I was doing uh, but I still wanted to do a video you know even though I haven't had time to do a, a full length uh, uh, you know episode in the joust restoration series I wanted to do a, a video and uh, something recently kind of reoccurred a problem reoccurred and if you haven't noticed already the Robotron Marquee Light is out again. Now, this happened before, back in December, and I was actually planning on fixing it live during the live stream I did on New Year's, uh, but when I turned the games on for New Year's for the live stream, the Marquee Light was on all of a sudden, and it had stayed on until the other day, and now it's out. So uh, I'm gonna try to fix that in this video. So uh, this is just gonna be a quick little fix, hopefully, you know, famous last words, and uh, give me a chance to, uh, you know, at least get a video out, a short one, um, and, you know, hopefully the, the next video, the next episode you see, uh, full-length episode you see, will be uh, the next part in the Joust restoration. So let's get set up on this tripod, and we'll uh, get going, get working on this. And I'm sorry if my voice is sounding all kinds of funny. Uh, my allergies are raging. Uh, let me turn off the games real quick. Uh, it's been warm here and everything's in bloom. Uh, the other day I noticed that my neighbor's uh, daffodils were, were up in their flower bed and all the dogwood trees are uh, blooming. So my allergies are raging. Um, so yeah, again, apologies if my voice sounds really weird. So we're gonna open this thing up and see what's going on. Uh, and there's really just four regular Phillips screws that hold in this, uh, whoa, don't lose that screw, uh, this upper retaining bracket that hold the marquee in place. Oh, and I got a hole in my shirt, that's nice. All right, we'll take that off, put it to the side for safekeeping, and then we can slide that marquee out of the way. And, uh, uh, so the, the system here is actually pretty simple. Uh, there's only a couple things here. Uh, obviously we've got a fluorescent bulb right here. Uh, we've got a starter down here and we've got this, um, ballast, uh, right here, which I believe is kind of like a transformer. Uh, and I think the ballast is the issue. So the, the way this has been going, you know, it's not like it's been flickering. It's not like it's been turning on and off or hard to start it's just dead completely dead and to me that's that's the sign of probably a bad ballast so i've got a new one and we're going to try to uh, replace it here on camera and if that doesn't work i've got a new starter i've got a new bulb uh, but i don't think those are the problem and usually that's where you go that's what you uh, try uh, to start uh, but again i don't think that's uh, the problem that we're having so we're going to try to fix this here, and uh, this setup is very similar to the one, the way it should be in my Joust, uh, which is something else we're going to have to fix soon, because in Joust they had ripped all of the fluorescent stuff out and just replaced it with a regular, you know, 60 watt uh, bulb, which is not right. So I think what I'm going to do to make things easy uh, is remove this um, ballast. We'll pop the new one in. I'm just taking a look at what's going on. There's a wire tie that connects it. Uh, to this end of the uh, fluorescent bulb. And it looks like it's uh, soldered in uh, to the connect connection that goes to power uh, from, the, um, from the harness, from the rest of the cabinet. So I'm just gonna come in here and we'll unscrew this. Again, being careful not to lose our screws. 
All right, that fell right out. Let's see what we got here. So this top part goes to, and I can just remove, oh, you know what? This isn't even a, is it a wire nut? Not really, it's like crimped on. That's kind of bizarre. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure I've seen that before. Let me cut this real quick. Actually, let me just cut as close as I can on the, oh, that was not what I meant to do. All right, now we'll take a look and see what's going on underneath here. All right, those are just soldered in directly. So that's the power coming in from the, um, the harness. And I don't know if there's any sort of marking on this, like what goes to what. So I'm not sure, maybe I should have done some research. I'm not sure if there's a, you know, if one side is supposed to go to the, um, what do you call it? The fluorescent light and one side is supposed to go to power. Uh, I don't know. So let me open up this new one I got here. And I think I got this off of Amazon, but you can, you can find these in various places, hardware stores. Um, yeah, I've been holding on to this for a while because I, I bought two because I knew I was going to, yeah, I think I, I needed one to kind of fix the setup down here and uh, to replace the old one. And, uh, you know, I knew I was going to need one to fix the setup out in the garage. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. So here's the new one. And I believe this is the same sort of model. It says... Uh, it's for, uh, what do we have? We have an F14 T12 uh, bulb, and this says it's for, among other models, F14 T12 right there. So, huh, I guess I'm going to kind of follow uh, what we have here. You know, I'll have the top, the top wire going to the bulb and uh, the bottom wire going to power. I don't know if that's exactly how it's uh, uh, supposed to be, uh, but let me get the wire strippers uh, so I can uh, prep these wires uh, to be connected. All right, got my wire strippers and uh, actually in my haste I went ahead and uh, stripped the wires um, before I turned the camera on so we should be good to go. Um, and also I did you know, look up um, the ballast and I don't think there's any kind of polarity, right? As long as it's wired in sequence, um, you know, which wire you use uh, didn't, doesn't or shouldn't matter. So to make things easier for myself, I'm going to use the longer wire and connect that to the um, bulb. Uh, and I'll use the shorter wire to connect to power. That's just what's going to work better uh, given the, uh, the sort of shape of the cabinet and the length of the wire that I have to work with. And I'm just going to use uh, some wire nuts to make my connection here. You know, I figure this is just power and uh, you know, wire nuts are used all the time, even if they maybe shouldn't be, for things like, you know, household wiring and, and that sort of stuff. So should be good enough for our marquee here and that, you know, uh, um, will, you know, avoid having to have me uh, solder in the inside the house, which I tend not to like to do. Um, see if I can get these kind of twisted up. Uh, it doesn't look that great. I'll just match them up and let the let the wire nut do the twisting. All right. See, so yeah, you know, I'll, sometimes I will, and you've seen me do it before. Why, um, I think so. Solder in the basement, um, but I don't like to do it because there isn't great ventilation down here, and I don't want to breathe in that um, burning flux or whatever it is. So, uh, all right. So we've got our new ballast wired in with these wire nuts. And uh, let's turn it on and, and hopefully we see that fluorescent light spring to life. And hopefully nothing blows up. All right, how are we looking? Nothing. Okay. Uh, maybe it wasn't the ballast. Is it the bulb maybe or the starter? Um, I think that's... Definitely, that might be the original starter and could be the original bulb. So 
Let's turn it off again. Oh. You know, it's such a, this is such a simple thing. Um, yeah, let's replace the starter, which just kind of twists out. And this is a uh, FS2, very common, very common starter. Um, and it just has these two lugs and it kind of, you know, pushes in and then twists. And my hands are dirty. Uh, let's see. And I've got a, a, a package of new ones here. Um, uh, you know, they still make these, obviously. So, fish this out. That's a FS2 starter. Let's see if this does it. Pop the new one in. Twist to lock in place. And uh, let's see what happens here. And it was just the starter. Well, huh, uh, isn't that lovely? I could have just, uh, could have been a lot easier fix than what it was. I'm gonna turn it off just so I can mount the unnecessarily replaced ballast um, back onto the cabinet. So, Huh. You know, that's kind of surprising to me. Um, I'm going to put these screws back in. Uh, just because, you know, usually if it's the starter or the bulb, you get like flicker. Well, oh, come on. Like that uh, characteristic sort of fluorescent light flicker. You know what I'm talking about? And uh, I wasn't getting that at all with this. It was just, it just stopped working one day, right? And to me, I'm like, well, that's... Is that the bat? That, that's got to be the ballast, right? And uh, nope, it was the starter. Or, you know, actually, for all we know, um, maybe it was the ballast, uh, and the ballast perhaps had taken out uh, the starter. Is that possible? I know, ba I know bad ballasts can take out bulbs for sure. Um, so that's a possibility. And you know, oh man. Uh, I kind of would, would prefer to put the old one back in, but I cut the wire so close um, to the case of this thing that, you know, I'm not gonna throw this away. I can probably, I can probably solder a, a new wire onto that, but we're not gonna do that today. We'll leave the, we'll leave the new one in there. Um, you yeah, know, we'll get more years of life out of it. I'm just gonna move the wires out of the way so they're not blocking anything. Um, so let's put the, marquee back on and uh, we'll back up a little bit just so you can see what I'm doing a bit better. Um, oh, and you know, there's something else we can do. Where's, uh, all right, here's the bracket. Um, you know what we can do, so, or what we have to do actually. So I had stolen, if you remember, in one of the recent Joust uh, episodes, I had, I didn't have the right screws that I needed to mount the leaf switches uh, onto the uh, joust control panel. So I stole them off of this joust. Um, and uh, so we can put them back on here. Uh, I did buy some new ones that I think are a pretty good match. I wasn't able to find them locally at Ace Hardware or whatever. So I had to go on Amazon. But I think, I think I got a good match. And I'll show you that in a second. So yeah, I just got to get these Four screws back in for the marquee bracket. And these are just regular Phillips screws, like I was saying before, which is funny because you know back in the day, you know some punk, some punk teenager could have come into the arcade with a pocket screwdriver, and in about thirty seconds, stolen, stolen himself a uh, Robotron marquee. So that should be good for now. So let's come in here and I'll show you what I'm talking about with the control panel. I've got it unlocked. Just undo the latch and pull this down. Let's see if you can see this. Hopefully you can. Um, there might be a bit of shadow, but um, the uh, the leaf switches have two screws that mount them uh, onto the, the control panel, and I pulled those out. Um, and if you recall, I really badly stripped um, one of them, so I'm gonna leave that in the joust. 
So this is one of the originals um, from the Robotron that I had temporarily borrowed. And here's the replacement, a new one, okay? And I believe these are number five wood screws, one inch long with a round head. Uh, I'll put a link in the, um, in the video description like I do for all of my, all of the parts I use in all of my videos. And Oh, and I also uh, stole a screw for um, one of the lights that are used to illuminate the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the player one and player two buttons, which are, um, you call them transparent or uh, translucent, maybe? All right, I'm going to just sort of starting them by, starting the screws by hand. Hopefully I won't have to readjust these uh, leaf switches, which can be a pain. So what I'm going to do, with, actually, because it's, it's tight quarters, I'm going to pull the uh, extension off of my screwdriver. It's got this little, I guess you would call this a chuck, just because we've got tight quarters here. We'll come in and screw these down. Okay. All right. And that looks pretty good. We'll do these other two right here. Actually, I think I need the extension right there. Tight quarters, but. All right. All right. Oops. Ah, it's not even on the chuck. There we go. Okay. We're almost there. There we go. And that leaf switch looks fine. All right. Um, but I do need to remount this bulb, which goes there. Okay. And uh, it used, that uses a, a different screw. Uh, so this is one of the originals, but I had to buy new screws for that, which are a little bit different. Uh, we'll show that in an up upcoming video when I, whoops, mount the, um, the new light uh, bulb holders. So let me get this going by hand. Sorry if you really can't see what I'm doing here. It's, it's really kind of tight and there's not great lighting. I'm not even going to get this, be able to get this started by hand. There's like no room. And I've got, uh, I've got LEDs here instead of the original, whatever they were, 44 or something um, bulbs, just because you can get these LEDs that are just so much brighter. And uh, there we go. Is that going to work? Move it a tiny bit out of the way. Uh, they're so much brighter and um, really help make the uh, um, the the buttons pop with color. All right, I think we're good. So, um, let's put this all back together. And I got my little chain here that kind of keeps the control panel from really, really flopping open. All right. Let's see if you can see what I'm doing here. Uh, so yeah, just a little quick fix video. Nothing too special, but these are things that you got to do sometimes. Owning classic arcade machines. So we'll pop that in, turn them on, and hope that marquee light stays on. And sure enough, it is. But my uh, <laughs> my um, uh, uh, Philips Hue lights need to be reprogrammed, which happens sometimes when you turn them on and off. So they're defaulting to their warm, uh, warm yellow. So 
marquee lights on, which is good. Um, let me actually kill the Phillips lights. So we just have the, just have the arcade lights lighting things up. And this, uh, this Tempest marquee has been flickering sometimes, so we might be replacing the starter or the bulb in that one relatively soon. So, uh, why don't we play one quick game of Robotron just to wrap things up here. Get a quarter. And my bucket's empty. <laughs> My kids have been playing a ton, a ton lately. So let me go, let me show you what I'm doing. Let's go and empty the Robotron coin bucket. And this is the original lock and original key. And it's really a pain sometimes to get, to get it to work. You gotta jiggle it. There we go. Look at all these quarters. All right, I can pull, pull that out. Look at all that money. Beautiful, beautiful money. And these buckets are that big because sometimes they really did get filled up over, sometimes overflowing, you know, there's all those stories, whether or not they're, you know, legit or apocryphal or whatever of, uh, like when Pong was first put out on test location, uh, Atari got called. Is this not going on right? Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, Atari got called, you know, because the game stopped working because it had, the coin bucket was so overflowing and had jammed up uh, everything. Is this not? Well, I guess that's how it goes. Put that in. Lock it up. So yeah, oh, come on, it won't even come out. Here we go. Let's actually do a two player. Well, uh, let's turn the lights off. Okay, so uh, both of those Buttons are illuminated properly. Marquee light is on. And also, there's sort of this gap here on purpose, uh, which lets light from the marquee shine down and illuminate the control panel, which is kind of neat and a bit um, uh, unique to uh, William. So let's start a two-player game. And now player one is starting. All right. Everything seems to be working. And this has the, uh, the original grommets, which tend to go bad. I'm going to kill myself. Um, here comes player two, because I want to start a player one game. It has the original grommets, and I have some replacements, some reproduction from Andrew B. on the Claw forums um, he had made. And uh, I think I want to try those out, because, you know, these the joysticks are fine. They are maybe a bit soft. And you do want soft grommets for Robotron, but I kind of want to try out... Uh, game over, player one. Kind of want to try out the uh, game over, player two. I want to try the new ones. So let's start a player one game just to test that button. Here we go. Everything's working. Um, maybe I'll play. Maybe I'll play a, a game here. Kind of off center. But uh, hopefully you can see what's going on. So don't expect a, uh, a high score, although I recently got my um, personal best 400 and something. All right, or 400 and something thousand, I should say, which is good for me, but not, not necessarily uh, great for Robotron players. You know, good scores, see? Uh, good scores are usually in the millions. And um, you know, usually I like to be seated to play Robotron and really focused on what I'm doing. And I'm kind of leaning off to the left you know, of course, making excuses for my terrible play. Well, I was chasing, uh, chasing a mommy, chasing a human to save, and I lost the life. Oh, let's get over here. Is that Mikey, I think? Oh, and I ran into a triangle. There we go. 
All right, so again, this is not the uh, how to play Robotron video. We're just making sure, oh, terrible. Awful, awful, awful. Yeah, we were just making sure that uh, everything was working properly. So uh, I'm not even gonna bother putting my initials in because that score is so bad. And Robotron saves, what is it, the top 40 or 50 scores, uh, but you only get to keep the top five uh, of your own performance. So if you enter the same initials in, uh, only the top five scores for that uh, person, that, that those initials are saved. So uh, let's see. Uh, there we go. Yeah, five entries maximum per player. So uh, yeah, there's my high score there, 409,250. So a lot better than I just did. But um, yeah, so was that interesting at all? Uh, unnecessarily replacing the ballast and then uh, replacing the starter or back in business with that marquee. So yeah, I think that'll do it for this quick fix episode of Overtime Arcade. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please like, share, subscribe, all the things that the YouTube algorithm loves. Leave me a comment. Um, yeah, uh, I, <laughs> I make these videos for you all, so hopefully you find them entertaining and enjoyable, maybe educational, but uh, I have fun making them, so I'm going to keep uh, doing it. So I think that'll do it for this episode of Overtime Arcade. I'm Charlie. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Oh, 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 overtime! overtime!